and welcome to Oz by Drone. Hey there, everybody. Welcome. I'm, I'm Greg. I'm John. And this is Wilson. <laughs> Hello, Wilson, and welcome to Oz by Drone. He's my test pilot for the bigger aircraft. <laughs> yeah, look, thanks for coming, guys. A little bit later today, we've got Chad, who's going to be joining us after the news. But um, before we get into the news, what's happening, John? Uh, all sorts of stuff happening today. We've got some great video clips to show you. We had some really lame fake news this week. Uh, really? That came up. Oh, fake man. news? It, it was lame. I, I know I didn't even like using that term, but this was so fake. Anyway, another media beat up on our, uh, on our hobby, which yeah. is a bit of a drag. And We're going to look at that shortly. And I've been flying around. I did some more security work this week. And some of you were, may, may have even noticed on my live stream uh, some of it leaking through. There was a moment there where the client said, oh, look, I need this on Facebook. And I said, well, it's open. So off it went. So um, for a while there, you were flying uh, inside a, a secure area um, and we were dropping packages and all sorts of stuff. Good to hear. Um, just to share with people, the other person who sits in the background, Mel, the Phantom Trucker, who normally does all of the chat stuff that's coming up on the screen, he's still driving today. But I did want to quickly share, before we get into the news, a few seconds of video from Mel that was meant to be in the show last week. So let's just chuck that up quickly now. So this is Mel coming in for a landing with his Inspire, but um, where's the audio for that? I, I sense something's going to happen, but I don't know what. No, he actually brings it in and nothing happens. Oh, so okay. the, comment, the comment on this was, um, I'm trying to find the audio for that one, two, three, four, five. There we go. I one of the, one of the rare times an Inspire lands normally, is that, that what it might be? I don't <laughs> yeah, look, we had Bill the drone reviewer on last time, and um, he was there for this. He was there for this footage, and um, he said, "Look, he's one of the best pilots I've seen. It's narrower apparently than it appears to us looking at that video." Ah, uh, I get it. Yeah, so okay. very narrow area, and um, you know, Bill just wanted to comment on that last week. But anyway, that was last week. This is this week, and we're going to hit the get... news. And speaking of news, as always, our news comes from a website wiki that's created by a couple of people. So we've got Greg Hilton and we've also got the news coming from, and I forget names every week and I'm getting laughed at, Jeff Sills. There, there you go. go. So Jeff um, Jeff predominantly builds the, uh, the news wiki and um, we pull down the information from there and um, certainly we get some Australian specific content from Greg as well. So thanks to both of those guys for doing that. Good stuff. So let's get into it. So we've been making news ourselves Now, A Current Affair, they did a story and we did a live stream um, at the time that they were going to air and we were talking about their content. Um, yesterday, or the day before now, it was Friday our time, Yep. Um, Ken Heron did his regular show and um, this featured, I was a guest on Ken's show and I've got a little clip from that that I want to play first and then a short clip of my own. Now, I'll, um, I'll let you come to your own conclusion about this, guys. Here we go. The ACA clip. here. Now I'm in my bikini. Oh, the darn drone. <laughs> Get out of here. <laughs> this thing won't leave her alone. <laughs> oh my gosh. <laughs> you, you don't even realize how much of this they used. Like there she is again in a robe now. We're jumping rope. Hey, now they're, of course she's jumping they're even rope. having, yeah, they're even having a look at her um, inside a house through the window. Right. Yeah, because that that's how drones work. You think she would have learned the first time she saw a drone start pulling shades, but no. Man, 
the fact that they have these angles from the other side is incredible. Right. I guess they're going to post that on uh, some toenail fetish site oh, or something. Oh, what a setup. It's just unreal. Okay, I've reached 30 I mean, meters, and now, as you can see, I'm just a little dot on the screen there. That's just so lame. So that shot that we're just going to hold that freeze frame for a minute, that's me flying at 30 meters from myself. Now, that's the size that I look at when I look at myself through my Phantom 4 Pro. And yet a current affair would have you believe that drone pilots are foot fetishists wanting to look at ladies painting their toenails in their houses through their windows or on the beach looking at bikinis or whatever. But this is just ridiculous. And I, I wanted to share that compilation that was put together by Ken. He did a great edit job. <laughs> and I think it told a story. It does. You know, the, that's the thing that, that where the media sees a story there, like they want to beat it up. So, and it's just lazy journalism. That's exactly what it is. There's no other way to describe it. So at no time did they set the aeroplane at the required 30 metres. You know, at any time we'll mention 30 metres. It was never mentioned in the story, the 30 metre rule. And have a look what a pilot can actually see in the screen, which is your point and, yeah. and the point of the response. And so, again, they've just, they, they do a shot where you've got a person in a, in a you know, either with a towel wrapped around them or sun baking or whatever, exercising, and the drone hovering in the background with the little round target symbol, you know, focusing on, on the top. It was all just emotive uh, it journalism. Was. And, and, you know, the trouble with that sort of thing is when you're dealing with it with no science at all, and as I say, no mention, you know, of, of, of a website um, for, you know, talking about what, what the requirements are for drone usage. Now, of course, we're not saying that people can't use this technology, but to put it out there as if all drones are going to be doing this, and that's why that's the way it read. That's I know. The way, I, and you know, I just thought it was lazy because it didn't have anything to back it. Um, and so, I, you know, we've had situations where we're flying research stuff, or we're we're doing multispectral work, or, or even other type of imaging, where uh, I have to say to people, well, you know, what about privacy? Well, there's no camera on the aeroplane. You know, uh, LIDAR is not really a significant way of, of, you know, taking the same sort of images. So, um, and occasionally when we work, if we're doing a survey of a public space, which has been cordoned off and not being used, and people in crime, we show them um, some of the, you know, if it's NDIV or other, other imaging. So that we're trying to pass the message here that some of some of the aircraft that we're using aren't there to take pictures as such, um, you know. And although you know people all think they're just flying cameras, and of course many domestic aircraft are. Not all uh, are, you know. And um, you know you won't see uh, a, a a great uh, picture like that through a, any lesser um, drone. I was going to say that a Phantom Four, Greg. That that resolution at 30 meters of view. Um, any lesser aeroplane with with uh, would be even more pixelated, and so anyway, just it just annoys me that, that it was a lame, a bit of a lame and lazy story. Yeah. Okay. So let's move on. Our second story of the day. Um, this one's interesting. So it's a different type of um, quad called a Whisper drone, and I'll just press that. There we go. Let's bring up the Whisper. Wow, it's quiet. Now, it's not perfectly quiet, but the interesting thing here is certainly the, um, the propellers, they're not propellers, so it's just an interesting design. Definitely experimental, um, but it doesn't have that traditional quad sound, so something interesting and unique, and I just thought I'd share How's that. How's it moving the air, Greg? What's, what's the story with moving the air? Is it not props? Are they... Are they um they're, they're kind of like vertical fan blades that are, oh, yeah, yeah. are, are okay. tilted, if that makes sense, the best yeah. I can tell. Yeah, it's, a, it's basically a ducted fan. Um, and, you know, I can see it now. Yeah, yeah. It's interesting. Uh, well, too, that, you know, often uh, modern jet technology uses that to hush the engines down a bit, too. Um, so, yeah, it's interesting. We, we don't get a lot of engine noise in our aircraft. Um, mm. most of, I, this is my understanding, um, is most of the sound that's coming out of a quad is a propeller noise. So, um, you know, it's pretty obvious. I mean, you yeah. can do that. If you take the props off it and run it, you can hear what the mo noise the motor is making. Yeah, um, absolutely. It's, it's not silent, but, um, most of it's prop noise. And moving on from that, we have 
something in the marine space. Now, this is an interesting um, story that I found this week. Um, there, there's some guys who've been designing a marine drone. Let's have a look. So just having a look at their diagrams and so forth, they've got Raspberry Pi, they've got Arduino. Yep. And basically this is one big PVC pipe. Mounted a camera in that. I understand they got some bilge pumps and added those on as well. Yep. And that's their propulsion that they're using the bilge pumps. But all of this um, Australian designed and built, so you know, I think it's a really good little project. All of this information, um, I'm, I haven't yet put the links in the description. Um, I was oh, uh, running that. late this week with my family's um, activities this week, but I'll put the links in the description. Yep. A couple of years ago, Greg, uh, I got approached by a, a salmon farming uh, company, a very large one in Tasmania, who were having a seal problem. Uh, they have all sorts of problems down there. and We didn't really look at the work, but they're investigating, they're ringing robotics companies. And, um, and we drew up one uh, for working. Apparently the seals uh, were uh, distracted by flashing strobe light. So what they wanted was one of those that just had a strobe light um, that worked around. And after significant testing, they still uh, came to the same conclusions that seals are very smart. <laughs> and yeah. uh, once they work out what's going on, if they, they want the fish, they'll get them anyway. Um, they wanted to know if we could put an aerial uh, where it make a difference to have uh, a a quad flying over the, the farming of the salmon farms. But uh, we didn't think there was much in that either. But I think that's a, that technology can grab, uh, you know, the Pixhawk autopilot or a regular autopilot with a Raspberry Pi, Navio. Um, all of the same things work. It's just a rudder um, on, a, on a floating vehicle like that. And submersible vehicles are good too. And what's great about them, um, that, that you know, the challenge is the positioning. So unless you're using ultrasonics to work depth in submarines, um, you've got to have a GPS aerial sticking up in the sky. Um, and, and, you know, without that, uh, everything, all the bets are off again still. But it's, um, yeah, it's not too hard to set up. If you've got an old autopilot lying around, you've got a, a tube, PVC tube, you can knock one up pretty quick with an old quad motor. Um, you'll have it leak, of course, uh, in various places, but it can be a bit of fun. Yeah. And just a quick comment. So um, Robbie FPV. Yeah. Chad is coming. It is a serious drone show. We just we oh. like to, we like we like to talk about everything across the broad spectrum. I mean, I come from a background of using the DJI products. I admit to not being an acro pilot, but it's something that I do want to experiment with. Um, but we've also got some acro people. Um, you know, I'm friends with Mark Coquio from years and years and years ago and other people on here are flying gliders and all sorts of things. So don't be offended. But let's get into, uh, we've got a few more news topics today. I'll just kill that chat message so that we can do this. So this one's an interesting one. It's, a, a, again, a new quad, or should I say it's not a quad, it's a try. Let's play that clip. Uh, commercial, Greg, a commercially available try or? No, so this is a, a university research project. Now, the interesting stuff, you have a look at that rope hanging down below there, and that's the first time. And the second time they're doing um, forward tracking of the rope. So it's just, and it's it stops swinging, that stops the pendulum effect immediately. The, the try is actually, if you have a look at the, the, the props on it, um, you know, they can be moved around in any direction, which gives it a lot of flexibility and a lot of control. That's amazing. Yeah. Yeah. And going forward, if you can imagine this thing for, for those into photography, hypothetically, if you could hang a camera down there, it would certainly make the gimbal operation a little bit different to what we're used to today. Oh, there it is, carrying stuff. There you go. Yeah. There's an application. Also, tether work too. You know, you've always got problems with tether swing. Look at that. That's pretty special. Oh, wait, there's more. <laughs> so that's with two, and we've got a third one coming in a, in a moment. Now, to be fair, they're obviously doing this under a, a controlled lab environment where they're using cameras for the positioning. So this is not testing, I think, from what I gather, the positioning of um, where know. they are in space. No, GPS is not good enough for that. No, no. But n nevertheless, an interesting design to have a look at. And you have a look at that, and it's just... 
spot on in terms of that positioning. Yeah, and uh, what you're looking at there, everybody, is uh, is fluid uh, mathematics. And so once once you start to once you start to use those equations, um, uh, you can, and especially working in a team, you can design them to move and be and basically fluid mechanics are fairly fixed. We know what the properties are of air. Um, we know what the what we're swinging, and so um, you can you can make an equation up. But um, check this out. Check this out oh, as yeah, it comes back. It's it's locked in space. You move it around, it'll come yeah. back, and it's yeah. very very quick in terms of how it moves back and very accurate. So interesting. Good stuff. Yep. So we're going to move on, and um, as drone shots says, hit the um, share to Facebook. Love you to do that, and certainly like the channel today. But let's move on to our next topic, which is. Backfly again, another new um, uh, product that we've seen this week. Let's check out the video. Yeah, this is the one we want. Have you seen this one yet, John? Yes, absolutely. Yeah, yeah. I, I watched a couple of I watched a couple of development videos of it. Uh, you know, it, uh, for all its cleverness, um, it it looks clunky. Some of it. Um, I got us, and I, I'm, I'm trying to decide whether the landing on on its belly like that is clever, or or clunky. I mean, I think it's a fantastic machine, um, and the way they sell it, you know, is that it'll cost as much as a regular normal sort of SUV, and it's a single seater and all that sort of stuff. It, it's got a lot of marketing wrapped around it. Of course, tilt rotor, um, uh, again, is certainly a really efficient way. To have uh, wings on a on a quad um, and a vertical lift, that's for sure. Mm. So uh, you know, I think you're going to see a lot of that kind of stuff out there. But they're going to market. That'd be great. Um, just see how it goes. Yeah, the machine. Absolutely, look interesting product. So as we move from that, we've got the world speed record. Oh, that'll be interesting. Um, let's go and have a check out of that. What are we flying here? Fixed wing? Oh yeah, we're flying a flying a racing quad, or what is it? So I'm just reading the material here. World record drone speed broken at um, this particular event. X Blade and Wings Copter teamed up to put together the fastest drone in the world to break the Guinness World Record. The Guinness World Record has to be done with two runs of 100 meters from either direction within the same flight to ensure that the wind is factored in and the average of the speed of both runs is taken. Right, we'll just we have modified a look uh, the motors to get the maximum amount of speed. There are so many things that could go wrong. Uh, the ECs can overheat, the motors can blow up, the wings can break. If Luke is going to push it too hard or push it to the limit, going in too fast, a lot of things can go wrong. There for um for that kind of frame. Okay. Did it have um, wings on it? Did it? I saw it, one of them had wings on it. It did indeed. Yeah. So your props are, are not uh, horizontal in any way. They're obviously uh you know they're they're either tractor or pusher to get those sort of speeds. Absolutely. We've got one more clip today, and then we're going to go and um, have our guest. So let's Yay. just have a quick check He's this out. Patiently back there. Now, John, you have a thing about turning fossil fuel. What's your saying again? Uh, the amount of fun you're having is directly proportional to the amount of fossil fuel you're burning. Yeah. Now, my, you know, my friend who's about to come on a glider pilot's going to argue with that, and he's got a good valid reason. <laughs> but that's, yeah. something, that's something we used to live with when we were, you know, had cars with big engines in them and boats with big engines in them. Yeah. And aer aeroplanes, it goes without saying, you know, there's nothing, nothing like flying a Spitfire. Yeah. And boy, so, those things can guzzle. So what we're looking at here is a combination of motor vehicles and um, a quad. So let's have a look at that one. Man, I 
reckon that'd be hard work because of the g-forces on you in the car and you use so much of your sensory um input while you're flying um it'd be, it'd be something you have to practice i don't think you can do that straight away yeah but, I'm, but you, I'm just trying to imagine that you know what i mean as you're in the goggles so you're seeing what the airplane's seeing but you're feeling what's in the car It'd be hard, some hard work in that, I reckon. I've never tried it, so I wouldn't know. Chad might have tried that. I don't know. Working, I, we talked about doing it from a from a helicopter, and that wouldn't be a problem because it's not the same G forces. Anyway, yeah. so like speaking of stuff. so speaking of Chad, we get to that point today where we've finished our news for the day, and <laughs> let's bring in Chad. All right, hey, Chad. I'm going to go and sit on the side, mate. I'll see you later. <laughs> All right, go have some fun, mate. So welcome, Thanks, Chad. Man. How are you doing? Uh, I'm doing good. I was sitting there uh, watching your news reports, and it was, it, it was, it was quite interesting. So the, the, speed, the speed record flight and the driving with the car, that was my good friend Luke. Uh, and I know all the X-Blades team guys quite well, so I uh, haven't seen them in a while because they're all the way over in Europe and I'm over here in Australia. But uh, yeah, it's good to see uh, my old friends doing uh, fun things still. Yeah, absolutely. So, Chad, um, this is a different world. So l what I wanted to do is start with where did you come from in terms of you know your aviation background? And I've pulled a few little videos. Let's just play the first one in the background while we chat. Yeah, um, I've been one of those guys who my parents said when I was a, when I was a toddler, I'd look at planes flying above me uh, and just stare at them. And I was always fascinated with aviation uh, and uh, lived out in the country, so didn't really have much to do with planes. The only time I saw planes or aviation was when it was flying high over my head. And when I ran sort of teenager years, I got into model aircraft, started with control line uh, powered aircraft, and then got into remote control, but started off uh, flying a uh, gliders because I couldn't afford the, the engines and so forth, and I figured that was a cheap way of getting into it. So and, you're saving money and just avoiding the engines. <laughs> yeah, pretty much. Yeah, uh, it, it was a it was a step in the direction that I wanted to go, and what I realised pretty quickly was I actually really enjoyed the the challenge of soaring. So um, I got into powered aircraft and enjoyed, enjoyed that, but I found that I enjoyed the gliding side of things more. So for many years, I was, I was flying quite seriously uh, competition F3B, F3J, open thermal style remote controlled gliding competitions. And then a friend of mine said, hey, I want to get into full size gliding. Do you want to learn to fly gliders with me? And that was all the excuse I needed. So got into full scale aviation uh, in gliding and once again, uh, flew, I never got my PPL, my powered license, but um, flew a, a reasonable amount of powered aircraft, but just found more joy in the challenge of, of soaring uh, because I like a challenge Okay, uh, and, and stuck with that. And, I, and I, I flew gliders for 12 years or 10 or 12 years or so before I got back into models again because my my eldest son was getting to the age where it'd be a good time to share it with with dad and we got some sticking goggles on and flying through windows and i went oh this is really cool and that was about 2013 and so I used my son as an excuse to get into uh drones and what's become mini quads uh and turns out that uh i'm a bit more addicted than he is and uh my life has kind of been taken over and since about 2014 or 2015 was when I quit my regular job and I've basically been involved full time uh, with um, drones ever since. Yeah. Okay. So speaking of drones, so I was trying to have a look back through some of your early videos and this is the earliest video I've, I've, I could find of you. Um, yeah, bone tricopter from uh, a YouTube channel called Flight Test. Fly, my pretty. Um, and Be thoroughly free. enjoyed flying uh, tricopters for a while. And that was my first quadcopter that I ever got. And the, the difference oh, yeah. in performance was extreme, to say the least. And so I got into these with the intention of flying FPV, first person view. But as someone who has flown line of sight remote control aircraft, I knew that mm. what the benefit was of being able to fly line of sight adequately and, and with some skill. So I said to myself, 
okay, the goggles are expensive. I'll wait a couple of months and I'll learn to fly a line of sight. And I mm. began to develop a uh, respect and enjoyment for the challenge of flying line of sight uh, and then progressed onto FPV and, and sort of went from there. And and let, it's a topic we, we spoke about last time. We were We were talking about your first drone from the perspective of someone who is not getting into the racing scene. And we talked about that. Tell me about what would be a good first quad to get um, that's not going to require an engineering degree to build. Yep. Right. Where would yeah. someone start? Okay. So that really is the big problem with the, the side of the hobby that I'm involved. It's very um, hobbyist grade. So it's like it's like going to learn. You want to you want to learn to drive a car. So. Uh, instead of buying a car, you buy a kit car and you've got to put it together. So it's a massive mountain to climb when you get into it because you've got to learn how to solder, you've got to learn to understand basic electronics, and you've got to learn how to tune it, you've got to learn to understand the software, uh, and then you've got to learn how to fly it. And a lot of people get put off by that. But there are a few uh, what we call ready-to-fly quads out there, which the, the quad is already built. All you've got to do is just connect the radio uh, charge the battery and go and fly. Uh, and to answer your question, something like a Immersion RC uh, Vortex 230 Mojo oh, yeah. is a very good first um, first design um, ready to fly quad, which means you don't, like you said, you don't need an engineering degree to be able to I put it together. And a lot of people don't want to fiddle with that at that hobbyist grade. They just want to go and fly. And yeah. something like that would suit them perfectly. The, the downside, of course, is eventually you will crash, eventually you will break something, and you've got to learn eventually at some stage how to repair it. So it's a question of whether you learn straight away or you learn after you crash it. Yeah, absolutely. So I see there we've got um, Ken Heron, um, who's joined us in the chat room, which is really cool to have Ken here. But um, Ken, you've got to really get into the racing stuff. You've been promising it for a long time, so I'd love to see you doing some more. I think I saw a video you uploaded earlier today, but we'll we'll have a look at that another time. But so you got into quads and then you've gone to a few places. I've got two more clips that I'm going to quickly put up from um, from you, Chad. So the first one is in um, Hawaii. Yep. Well, it it all started off as just as a hobby for me. I was just because I love aviation, I, I love videography. So I, I would make videos when I was flying gliders and so forth. And what I liked about drones was that I liked the carefree nature of a remote control type of craft. Didn't mm. have you sitting in it. So you could do silly things and get away with it. But I liked the freedom of actually being in a full size aircraft because the, the view was so much more amazing and, and it was a different viewpoint. But the problem with the full size aircraft was, oh, I want to go and fly between those two trees or go underneath that gap. And you couldn't do it because your life was at risk. So mm. the combination of FPV and the drone brought those two aspects of aviation that I like together, strap a, strap a camera to it, and all of a sudden now you can record some amazing things in a, in a way that you, that you normally couldn't do. So mm. with my love of videography, and I just I stopped because it was what I was doing. And the more videos I made, the more people would sort of comment and like my videos. So I started getting a... We're having um, a little bit of internet issue with yourself there, Chad, today. Your audio is frozen, but um, look, some beautiful footage. While we're waiting for you to come back, we'll go and play the next one, which was taken at Chernobyl. Yeah. Sorry. How, how am I now? Back again? You're back again, yeah. Okay, yeah. Sorry. Bad internet. Well, thanks very much, Australia. <laughs> <laughs> this but show is proudly sponsored by Telstra and the NBN. I don't have the NBN, I've got Telstra, but no matter which one you get, it's going to have some fun in Australia. Welcome. Exactly. Yeah. No, I, um, like I said, I, I just took this as a bit of a hobby, having a bit of fun. And the more videos I made, the more people watched my videos and I got a following. And then, um, I had some of the companies that made these products that I use say, hey, we'll sponsor you with products if you um, if you put our logo on your video. So I thought, okay, cool, my, my hobby is being paid for. Mm. And then uh, around 2015, the whole racing scene started uh, 
uh, popping up. And one of my sponsors said, if we pay for your plane trip, will you go to the like the first unofficial world championships over in America? And I went, okay, cool, free trip, have a bit of fun with my friends. I get to meet all the people on the internet that I've been talking to for years. Sounds like a good excuse to go and have fun. So I went there and I didn't take it too seriously. And somehow by luck, I managed to win absolutely every single part of the competition and go away as the, the world champion. Uh, and mm. that's when it all went kind of crazy. And I just started getting invited to all these different trips all around the world to sort of help advertise things and uh, joined up with various people on YouTube and basically spent the next two and a half years just touring all around the world to different crazy locations like is on here now. Mm. We went to Ukraine and we visited uh, Sh the Chernobyl nuclear um, nuclear um, uh accident site and uh i i got to do some amazing things and go to amazing uh locations that i would never have been able to so uh i've been able to well uh, sort of have a, a midlife crisis and go and just do crazy things and i'm very thankful for that yeah look it's absolutely beautiful footage and um it's, it's really um you know a great thing to say we've got some aussies that are you know traveling around the world flying like this so Congratulations in being an Aussie and being at the head of the pack. Well, I've long since retired from all the racing. I just don't get into it anymore. But our sort of our defending world champion is still an Aussie, it's young Thomas Bitmata, who lives down in Melbourne. He sort of he took the reins from me, so the Australians are still out there representing like they uh, like mm. they do in, on the world stage, which is really good to see. Yeah, absolutely. So let's um, let's flip back um, to you and me, we'll um, have a look at some other video later. Um, let's talk about something else. We, we, we had that live stream recently, the current affair thing, right? So tell me, you saw the news clip at the beginning. Tell me your reaction. It's the same reaction when I see anything from one of those sort of the current affair style programs. Uh, all of it is is just scare tactics, propaganda. There's no real facts. There's nothing really helpful in those shows. And people that take those shows seriously um, really need to have a, have a closer look. At, mm -hmm. at the end of the day, there was nothing really that factual about what they were doing, and they were leaving out some important information about the actual usability of drones. So the inability to sneak up on someone, the inability to see someone with great detail considering that uh, we use mostly fisheye lenses and we don't have uh, lenses that can zoom in apart from digital stuff which uh, reduces the uh, resolution and is not usable anyway it, they left out the simple fact that can you spy on people technically yes can you do it in a practical way where you can see naked people no you can't it's it's just not a practical thing. If I wanted to go and spy on someone, I'd have a lot better results in doing it two ways. Either sticking a, a, um, a, a handheld camera on a pole over a fence or hiring a Cessna and, and flying around at 500 feet with a, with an SLR, DSLR camera with a, with a larger lens on it. Uh, what, what they're saying that we're doing is completely impractical, not possible, but not only that, it just doesn't happen. Yeah, I mean, a telephoto lens, you're going to get a lot better stuff out of it with that. And people have been commenting to me, you know, what about if you film it at 4K and then you zoom and crop? Well, sure, you can film at 4K, but you've got to actually know where you're flying if you're so far away from something to be able to actually get the target. And by the time you're that far away, it's a pinprick. So I was only flying at 30 meters in that video that we looked at before, and it, it, it's hard enough to see me. But anyway, I'll, I'll stop talking about it now. But, you know, I hope, I hope that CASA makes an example of a current affair and goes and says, hey, inappropriate, if they were flying closer than 30 metres, or if it wasn't closer than 30 metres, then I hope that, um, you know, they've breached the code of conduct for, um, for television broadcasting. You can't just make up fake news like that in Australia under the code of conduct. It's just not on. It, it would be really nice, but I, I have my doubts that Cass is going to do the correct thing because. And you just froze at that exact moment. <laughs> we'll wait a few seconds and see if you come back. There we go. Oh, now. there we go. You've come back. Okay, back again. You were saying you just said the word Casser and then um, and then you froze. So maybe they're monitoring our broadcast and halting the internet 
How you doing, Kassa? Now, I I highly doubt Kassa is going to do anything because, first of all, Current Affair is one of the big players, so they don't re they don't really care about those people. Second of all, a Current Affair is trying to make it look like the drone is dangerous, and I truly believe Kassa wants less people to fly. In the, they don't, they don't care about the hobbyists, so they're probably happy about that. It's it's sad, but it's the way that I see it. Yeah. Um, I just saw Mel came in, so I'm going to get you, Mel, to um, start pressing the magic buttons for me because um, that way I can talk without doing two things at once, you know, rubbing your tummy and patting your head or whatever. I'm trying to do the titles. and Anyway, so where were we? So, Chad, I had a couple of other things in my notes, and I'm trying to remember where they were because my printer played up. You... Da -da -da -da. You tell me, what was next on my list of things to talk about with you? Um, where are we? Let me get in here. See, we're um, really prepared here today. Oh, yeah. So uh, where is it? Where do you think the hobby is going next? And particularly with regard to, we, we were talking before about um, separation, right? So there's a guy, Gary Mortimer, who's part of um, SUAS News, and he's got a saying that he wants no GA below 2K. How do we kind of do something in airspace similar to what they do in radio and divide up the spectrum? How do we divide up the airspace? Um, well, I, first I'll, I'll reply to what he said about no aircraft below 2,000 2, feet. I think that is impractical and, and a lot to ask, at least at this stage. Maybe in 20 years when we reassess manned versus drones, um, that may change. But right now, there is a practical reason for aircraft to be down to at least a thousand feet uh, in everyday applications for what they're doing uh, and <clears throat> while they need to respect our right to use the airspace we need to respect their right uh, but mm. also particularly when it comes but let to me ask them, you this let me ask you this should we be forward thinking and saying hey look this is the slab of airspace that you you said possibly 20 years from now can we think about 20 years from now today and start planning that out? Should we be doing that? Or if it's not 2,000 feet, maybe it's 1,000 feet, whatever the magic number is, and saying, okay, zero to 400 is recreational. 400 to whatever is the next, and you know, should we be going there now? Well, I, I personally think... You personally okay. think something. Oh. <laughs> We're having fun with the internet again. Thank you, Telstra, for your proud support. Internet. Okay. Okay, I think I'm back. You're back. We'll okay, try one cool. more time. Um, yep. Apologies for this. Uh, I personally think that CAS has gone backwards in their regulation steps from what they previously had. So when you're in a high populous area, you have a lot of people around and you're going to have a lot of uh, manned aircraft around because that's generally where the airfields and so forth are and people are moving various, moving moving things aviation-wise. I, I totally agree. Um, your 500-foot rule and 400-foot rule, whatever, whatever it is, wherever you are, that totally makes sense. But when you get away from population and things space out, mm -hmm. like you go out... Australia, where it's Class G airspace and there's nothing around. Um, completely different out there. I mean, mm. if you're only seeing an aircraft every two days that's not below 35,000 feet, who are you affecting? Uh, it, it's all down to the statistics and numbers. So I would tend to say I kind of agree with you, but look at it in a different way. Around the city in high populous areas where there is a higher risk of coming into contact with other aircraft, have it a bit more lower and a little bit more stringent, but out in the, out in the where there's no one out there, have it mm. a lot more relaxed. Okay, okay. So the, here, here's where I'm coming from. Like Gary is definitely interested in the UTM systems and all of that kind of stuff. And he wants them to be able to have drones playing where drones play autonomously without having to worry about general aviation. That's, that's kind of his take of where he's coming from. But um, yeah, I look, I don't know how we get to Nirvana, but certainly it's a journey. Yeah, it's it's going to be a long process. And I mean, I call out CASA a lot of times when I'm frustrated with them, but they're in a hard situation on how to deal with what is an intrusive technology 
that they've never had to deal with in the whole history of them, of any of these regulators being around. So there's no easy answer. Um, I think the, the big problem is And your screen has just frozen again. Look, I think we're going to have to potentially leave this for the moment in terms of chat. We'll go and maybe come back, see if the internet improves. We'll skip to our next information here. So a couple of things. Number one, we've got a competition happening. And sorry to those who are non-DJI fanboys here. Um, the prize is a DJI prize. Um, but it's not an aircraft, so it's okay. It's a DJI Osmo Mobile. Um, we're trying to get to um, a thousand subs on the channel, so if you can help us out to get there, we're going to give that away as soon as we hit a thousand. So that's a competition that's in flight, pardon the pun. And if you want to enter, there's a video that tells you how to do that. So have a look at that. Um, and just a quick one to Mel. I don't know what's happening with the titles. I did kind of hand over to you to update those, but it doesn't look like it's updating at the moment. So I'll just leave them off the screen for now. Um, so that's number one. Um, number two, in terms of next week, we have Rick from Drone Valley going to be coming and being our guest next week. Now, he he was going to be here today, but unfortunately he had some family things come up and that wasn't possible. But he did say that there's going to be some sort of a giveaway next week. Now, Rick is a really great guy and got some all, all sorts of products. Um, I don't know if it's a flying giveaway, but definitely come and join us next week. Um, we're not a big channel, so you've got a good chance of winning. So let's do that next week. And as we move on, let's move on to some Australian video. So Greg Hilton, who's one of our regulars, he helps to compile some videos for us um, each week. We want to showcase and share um, drone related video from Australia. And um, certainly it's the cinematic kind. Sorry, it's probably all shot with DJI, but don't let that offend you for those who are in the acro scene. <laughs> C cinematic is is good stuff uh, people need to realize that there's there's talent in all areas there's no such thing as good and bad the, uh, genres. i know i was just having a go at that yeah. i can't even remember who mentioned it before but let's have a look anyway So each one of these videos that we're sharing today, we've um, contacted the people who um, created these and um, ch chatted to them on their channels. We're sharing their channel names on the screen for you as well, so you can go and support them. And later today, I'll put links in the description for the video as well. Now there's a little bit of insane flying there. <laughs> that was definitely not a DJI product. That was from Malice Vex. His first GoPro video. And then moving on to Western Australia, we've got just Josh Cornish. Now, the place that he's filming here is supposedly Denmark, Western Australia. I didn't know we had a place called Denmark in Australia, but there you go. You learn a lot of new things. And then we move to Simi, some video of um, Mount St. Bernard in Victoria. Very pretty. This is the one thing that drones do a very good job of, showcasing beautiful locations in a way that you've never seen before. Then we've got Ruben here with some insane FPV at Flinders Ranges. Or have I got that out of order? No, there we go. Three-day trip through the desert there.
from RR26, then moving on. Just, just to share with people, Australia is, um, you know, there's a lot of parts of the country that people from around the world just don't understand how big the country is. There's a little short one, silo art. So someone's um, done some graffiti on a, a, an old silo there. Then we got a South Australian border track. That one was RI26. I think I got them out of order before, but we're all good. But you know what? Here's the interesting thing. This is just footage that I've picked up over the last week. This is not one year's worth of footage. This is new stuff being created within the last week. And there's just so much of it. People using drones and filming and creating some beautiful Beautiful footage and having a great time flying as well. A lot of people are only just now starting to understand how to get the most out of what is just another photography tool. It's just a camera that's in the air and you know people um, are so afraid of drones as we've been talking about earlier but they're not afraid of an iPhone being used in a park. A drone is no different. It just goes up. So this one is Elevated Views. I saw him in the chat room earlier today. I love the colour there, beautiful colour. Did you do any um, colour correction on, on that Elevated? It does look like a bit of colour correction work in it. Very nice. We've got four more to go. And I notice your internet has cleared up, so that's good at least. <laughs> that's something. I've been trying not to talk to give it a little bit of breathing room. And again, thanks to Greg Hilton for um, you know searching for some new Australian content and putting this together for us. It's very much appreciated. We got some dolphins there. I just saw a funny comment from um, from Ken Heron. From this height, you can't even see the Australian bugs and animals that want to kill you. Well, you can see those sharks though. So sorry, Ken, those animals do want to kill you. Oh no, those weren't sharks, they were dolphins. My bad. <laughs> see, you couldn't tell if it was a shark or a dolphin. <laughs> I'm having a chuckle. <laughs> That'll be the next story for a current affair. Yeah. So we've got someone here who's doing some um, tree lopping. It's a, actually a tree lopper company that's doing some work. So they were showcasing that um, their work, but they also had some interesting Australian footage and just sharing with people these trees, Australian, it looks like a gum tree of some, co some sort. It's interesting the different perspective it gives to a job like that that you wouldn't normally see. And before anyone asks, um, these people are accredited tree people and you know we're not just cutting down trees for the sake of it. But they were from Austral Tree Services. And this is where they start to um, go up and you know showcase the surrounding area. But I think it's an interesting use of drones. You, you never would have thought of someone who's a tree lopper using a drone and they actually use them so that they can plan out their work when they're going and doing this work, um, you know, to know and plan it out. So good use. And I've always said with drones, if you can do it easier, cheaper or safer, there's a job for a drone.
Now I can see Ken Heron in the background there saying he's going to get my passport next month. He's been saying that for five months, which is what someone else is sharing in the channel there. Uh, Ken, I'm, I deliberately am very happy that you're here today and I'm, I've got so much beautiful Australian footage to share with you. So we're just holding it out there as bait for you. Ken, you're only getting older every single day. Get, get your passport and go and see the world. That, that's some of the places I really would like to go more into Central Australia and get some of those those shots in the outback, like the sunset shots. The, the colours mm. are just amazing. And there's our last one for the day, shot by Sky, which is the baker's oven at the Great Ocean Road, Victoria. So that was um, our Australian segment today where we like to showcase some Australian creators putting together some great aerial shots and certainly they were really, really good today. Thank you, Greg Hilton, for compiling that together. We're coming up close to the top of the hour. Um, as I mentioned at the beginning, um, John Morrison needed to disappear early today, so he apologises. He's um, going to a family birthday event, um, but um, he'll be back next week. And again, next week we're going to have... Um, we're going to have Rick from uh, Drone Valley. I almost forgot the name of the channel for a minute. Rick from Drone Valley. He was going to be here today, but he apologises. Um, he had some family matters come up. So he'll be here next week. Prize will be given away next week. I don't know what it is, but Rick said he'll, he'll have something to make up for his absence today. Chad, thank you very much for, for being with us today. Um, it was nice to kind of mix the photography and the the racing slash acro scene together. So thanks for joining us. Not a problem. It's good to be here. More than happy to be back at any point in time. And I mean, the two different disciplines that uh, that we do uh, are not that different. We're both trying to achieve the same thing in a certain degree, just in slightly different ways. And um, it's just different it, hardware. That's all yeah. it is. It, it's very interesting uh, with the the freestyle type of quads that uh, I fly. Uh, the trend now is going for what they're calling the cinematic style, so mm. slower and smoother. So we're kind of like copying what DJI quads have been doing right from the beginning, but we're doing yep. it without a, without a gimbal. So uh, it's, it's amazing how much cross-pollination is happening. Uh, just before we go, I'm curious, um, tell me, what do you think the future of the non-vendor quads is in terms of borrowing and stealing technology from the vendor quads? Um, it's interesting to see where it'll go because I think a lot of our technology has really plateaued. Mm. So things like propeller technology, we already know everything, uh, especially when you're flying at slow speed, aerodynamics is not that important. Uh, the electronics and so forth, PID controllers and, and processors are not really bringing new technology to it. Uh, I think the, the, the real improvements will be in battery technology and that kind of technology is not going to come from our area in terms of drones it's going to be coming from the the big manufacturers like the electric car manufacturers and tesla and things like that so i think we're all probably going to be taking technology from them in the future as the as the battery technology uh improves over time mm. Yeah, absolutely. So um, we didn't have Mel doing the titles for us, but let's, before we go, have a quick look in the chat room. So Greg Hilton says, thank you, Chad. Greg is certainly the guy who put together that footage. So thanks again, Greg. No worries, um, Greg. We've got Ken Heron. You've got many years to go before the discount kicks in. I don't know what that topic was about. <laughs> um... Steve is warning Ken about us driving on the wrong side of the road. I hate to tell you this, but at least our steering wheel is on the right side of the car. So anyway, what else have we got here? I'm not going to get involved in that argument. No it's an oldie but a goodie. It's an oldie <laughs> but a goodie. Any, any questions for Chad from the, the chat room before we go today? 
perfect really Steve but I haven't been out to be honest Arden E was working with some tree climbers getting some footage with a mini quad Ken saying wait he could use his seniors discount to come to Australia <laughs> <laughs> Not sure if it works that way. Okay, let's have a look. Any questions for um, for Chad before we go? One twenty down under. Welcome to the channel. No, I think we'll leave it there today. While people are thinking about what they're going to put in that chat, we'll just share our regular end of show messages and announcements. Please do share subscribe hit the bell all of those kind of good things so we're on obviously on youtube we're also on facebook like our page share some stuff there if you'd like to um, share some videos to us by all means we tweet out the show on twitter as well and if you okay. do I Sorry, go ahead. Just the people in there who are uh, typing in there if you think of topics that uh, you'd like on the show uh, write them in the comments because uh, guys like us are only sitting here talking about stuff that you guys want to hear. So put your topics that you'd like discussed in, in the in the comments section and Absolutely. I'm sure that it'll be uh, followed up shortly. Absolutely. Or better still, I'll give you an email address in just a minute so that I don't miss it. But um, if there's anything you want to physically send, so Ken over in the US, people have been participating in the candy exchange program and sending candy from all around the world to Ken. I don't need candy. I've, I'm, I'm, you know, round enough as it is, pardon the pun. So if there's anything else that you want to send interesting, there's an address for you. And if you do want to get in touch by email, um, we would love to share your video footage on the channel and talk about it, discuss it, highlight it, etc. There's an address where you can send a link to the video. Please don't send the actual video file, just a link to it so that we can pull that down. So that's all from me for today. Thanks everyone for joining. Thanks for participating. We'll be back same time next week, 11 a.m. And we've got one over here, a question for you, Chad. There we go. It's coming up on the screen, maybe. Ken is asking, how do you keep your beard so tidy? There's the question of the day. Well, um, keeping my beard tidy is kind of similar to sort of my general body odor. I, I, I consider myself to be a perfectionist, so... Um, I have I, I clean myself up and I have a shower once a week whether I need it or not. Yeah, absolutely. Um, there's another one from Steve Mack. New segment idea. Each show we're going to highlight an Australian animal that could kill Ken if he comes to Australia. That could be quite interesting. <laughs> um, I've got another question here from um, Daryl. What's a good 3D print quad body to print? Uh, that's actually a good question. I couldn't answer that. I'm not really into the 3D printing scene. And generally speaking, those, those, most of those 3D printed bodies are quite brittle. They don't last very long. They're nice and cheap. Um, I would suggest get on, get on Thingiverse and have a little bit of a look, but it's, it's not an area that I tend to uh, get involved in. Yeah, absolutely. Okay, look, we'll leave it there today. Thanks for joining, everyone. See you next time. Bye for now. See ya. Thanks, Chad. Thank you.